The gun is good. The gun is good. The penis is evil. The penis shoots seeds and makes new life to poison the earth with a plague of men, as once it was. But the gun shoots death and purifies the earth of the filth of brutals. Hello and welcome back to the first episode of Kill James Bond recorded in 2024. I am Alice Cordor Kelly. I am joined, as always, by my friends Abigail Thorne and Devon. Hello, gentle listener. <laughs> how the hell are you doing? How, how are you? How are you sort of bearing up under the psychic assault of the, the, the 20 best seconds of Zardos? Yeah, followed shortly in uh, by every other twenty seconds of Zardos. It's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. A, a succession of twenty second moments where you think, "Sick, You're like hell yeah, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> it's just like lay our cards down right at the mm-hmm. start. Yeah, mm-hmm. Zardos rules. This rules. This rules. This movie rules. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, I really yeah, liked great. it. This fucking ripped. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Let me just let me just be absolutely upfront about this. I believe that Zardos is great. It's a, it's. A, I had a great time. I believe this to be a good film. I'm glad I watched yes. it. I enjoyed mm-hmm. it. it. It would be so easy for us to do a kind of like nostalgia critic style. Let me make one thing perfectly clear: the age of consent in many parts of Japan is, in fact, thirteen years old. For example, sex between 13 to 17 year olds. Like, what the fuck? This movie's so fuck? weird. It's like trippy. Like, were they like smoking weed when they made this? Using drugs? Yeah, yeah, maybe they were. Yeah. Who gives a shit? It's a good film. I like it. They were. And harder, canonically. This was all in the director's commentary. Zardos has been on the docket for a long, long time for the mm-hmm. obvious reason, which is, if you haven't seen it, you may have seen a picture from it, mm-hmm. which is Sean Connery. Uh, with a ponytail, a handlebar moustache, wearing a kind of like strappy red combat beach ensemble, holding a Webley Fosbury revolver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like if the Borat Mankini was being used in like an amphibious assault. Yeah, so his fit in this is like he's got some <laughs> red above the knee riding boots. He does. Red mm-hmm. speedos, crossed red yep. bandoliers. Yep. Nothing else. So he wears this for the entire movie. The whole movie. Very, very, very sort of like prominent dick bulge mm-hmm. also. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and you think, oh, that's funny. That's weird. It's it's interesting that Sean Connery did this like after Bond, after uh, Diamonds Are Forever, right? Uh, what a fun little like additional bit of canon to, to Bond that like mm-hmm. the guy did this. And it's in the same sort of... Uh, space as Universal Soldier for Lazenby, right? Where it's like, you get out of Bond, you do a weird one, and it's kind of yeah. funny, and we can all yeah. laugh about it. No, no. This is... it's. I'm not going to say it's not a weird movie, right? Mm. But that it's it's trying to make points, it's trying to do something with this, and uh, I, I engaged with it seriously, mm. rather than uh, rather than sarcastically, and of offering that level of sincerity to it, I, I really enjoyed it. Definitely. I, I think we've... A lot of our movies we've talked about that you don't have to watch them before you listen to the episode. I think yeah, if yeah. you have the opportunity to watch Zardoz before you listen to this, I would recommend it more yeah, than anything genuinely. in the world. Yeah. Do some drugs. That goes for you all, too. Yes. Well, the thing is, right, th- this, this, movie, this movie was like, uh, it didn't do very well at the time. Ah, and I think part ah. of the reason why is that there's a technological disparity, right? Because they had the drugs available to make this movie, mm-hmm. but they lacked the crucial technology of watching it with two, like, two to three clouted up transsexuals, mm-hmm. uh, which is what I did, and having access to that technology mm. really enhanced Oh yeah, it. the transsexual Discord server makes Zardoz um, yes. the mm-hmm. cinema that I think it was always meant to be. Definitely. I, I, think, I think if this inspires you... We should do a screening... We actually should. It would be great fun. You genuinely, if this inspires you to do anything, it should be to institute a kind of clouted up transsexual movie night. I actually know somebody who does trans movie nights in London. We we could do like a Zardoz screening. Yeah, okay. Let's, yeah, offline this. We should 100% talk about this. <laughs> okay. um, so, 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 yeah. To set the scene ever so slightly, mm, um, yeah. 
This is back before the current media model of trapping promising young directors in the Marvel mines. Yes. At this time, the basic mode of the industry was you made one hit movie, you had carte blanche just to mm-hmm. do fucking whatever you wanted. So John yes. Borman made the movie Deliverance. And it was mm-hmm. fantastic. We, we remember with the bit of down, 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 down. Yep, fantastic. Huh? And it was so successful for his next movie, the studio gave him one and a half million and he did, he did Zardoz. They gave him one and a half million and were like, do whatever the fuck you want. This movie cost one and a half million dollars. One and a half million. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Oh, What's yeah. that yep. in today's money? Let me try and for I... a sec. Give me a second here. One and a half billion dollars. I, I don't know, but... <laughs> The thing is, you can't go back, right? You can't go back to the 70s drugs. Like, you can't even get quaaludes anymore. Mm -hmm. The weed is too good. (laughs) The weed's too strong now. (laughs) Yeah, basically. You wouldn't direct Zardoz. You would just want to have a little sit down. Yeah, this is is the product of... like, And I'm not a drug person, so it's foolish for me to speculate about the precise intake of drugs that led to this movie being made. But I will say that a sine qua non for making this movie is the weakest, shittiest, most ditch weed in the world 100%. being smoked constantly. You want to all be on it. I just, I just looked it up. One and a half million in 1974 is $9.6 million today. That is nothing by movie no. budgets. That's like, I can't believe they made this for so little. And they did so much with it, right? It's incredible. Sean Connery yeah, must yeah, have yeah. done this for cheap as well, especially since he asked for a million for Diamonds Are My Pussy or whatever it was. Well, apparently he he, he had difficulty getting work after Diamonds Are My Pussy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is, I, I don't think, surprising, given, first of all, that the movie was called Diamonds Are My Pussy, mm-hmm. but second of all, because he's be fucking James... First of all, he's James Bond, and second of all, he's now looking old as fuck. Mm-hmm. So you can't even really convincingly cast him as James Bond. Yeah, well, he's still aging into old man Connery. Knowing yes, that yeah. um, Borman originally considered the Burt Reynolds to play Z, it really does illuminate that the character was chest hair out. As mm-hmm. it's- yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So very, very, very masculine. It's, just, it's the hairiest motherfucker we've got. All right, we can't get him. Who's mm. the second hairiest? <laughs> Sean Connery or me? Those were the three choices. <laughs> well, nowadays it'd be me. Yeah. Mm. They do what they call meditating at the second level, which mm. they sort of stand up and they wiggle their mm. fingers and they all speak with this one is mind. Very funny to watch. It, it, this is one of the sillier bits visually. This is what would kill you if you were on any sort of hallucinogen. This is at the 54 minute mark. It would kill anyone. Mm-hmm. Clip of that would much. help you to do the kind of like nostalgia critic review of like, mm. this is a silly movie. So, just to clarify, this revolutionary, groundbreaking movie that everyone was just blown away by how different it was has the white guy saving the black guy, Christ symbolism more obvious than Man of Steel, and a woman saving the man, not through physical strength, but through emotional support. Well, Apart from every single movie I've ever seen in my life, that is very original stuff. Okay, so since we brought up this bit, um, I yeah. this is silly, but this is um, where I've written. This is kind of like drama school. I w- I wrote this down too. I said it looked like a drama school exercise. It's in my very words that I've wrote down. Um, this film is a little bit silly, and it is a little bit at times like like something you'd see drama school students do. It actually reminded me most of um my drama school master's piece that I made and that it's like a little bit goofy, made on a mm-hmm. shoestring budget, but it is sincere. And it's like, okay, yeah. if you want to show a room full of people joining in one mind and then expelling one person psychically, how would you actually do that with no budget? How they else stand would you up, do it other than they wiggle yeah. their fingers and you get a bunch of actors and they completely fucking commit to it. And like, yeah, yeah okay, it's a little bit goofy, but I, I think in an age where we're obsessed with calling things cringe and like refusing to engage with things, I really respect the hell out of them for doing this, and I, mm. I like this scene. I thought it was good. It was effective. Yeah. And so he's he's fleeing through this like civil mm. war in heaven, and he he runs into the renegades and friend, mm. and they dress him up as a bride. Yes, they to do. Him yes, yes, they, they do. fucking do. This is another bit where you can show the image and be like, oh, it's a funny movie because it's Sean Connery with a what handlebar the mustache hell? as a wedding dress, right? But, like, it's making a point here. Well, the thing is, the, the effect of it is that Sean Connery is there in a wedding dress. They sneak Sean Connery to friend by disguising him as a bride, and mm. they go, like, friend, kiss the bride and take it off, and it's Sean Connery with the big mustache. Friend and, kind of sardonically calls him a naughty girl, by and, the way. And friend goes, death comes closer for us all. And I wrote, this is really quite something. <laughs> De- death is a bride, you know? Not, yeah. a, not an uncommon sort of metaphor. Mm. But he shoots uh, a vision of himself as an exterminator. 
mm. and like overcomes his own nature, I suppose. Yeah, in he, some he, way. he fulfills Zardos' plan for him, which is to become, as Zardos says, the slave who could free his masters, which is a fucking Hegelian dialectic mm -hmm. is happening in this movie. Again, you can't just be like, oh, it's the one where Sean Connery wears a mankini and gets his tits out. I will say that is my one complaint, is that when he gains all the knowledge of the universe, he does cover those titties up. Yeah, it's showing no. you the like, weird visuals from this going, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 it's more than that. No, they made a movie! <laughs> yes, yeah, they made a work of art. Somebody yeah. read Phenomenology of Spirit, smoked a bunch of really, really yeah, weak John 70s Borman. weed, and then made a movie about it of, mm. like, utmost sincerity. Yeah. And, yeah, so, so this yeah. destroys... Sean Connery also gains the power to reverse time. And then the, the final sequence is Sean Connery and Charlotte Rampling sat there, like, staged just straight in front of you, mm -hmm. and they age, and it, like, cut, they have certain age and it cuts and they're like a little bit older and they've got the baby between them and he ages up and then he leaves and the two of them age into skeletons and this whole mm -hmm. time Beethoven Seventh is pumping. And even if you go into this going like, this is a funny movie, lol, nostalgia critic, hoo 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 hoo. What was it? Surf ninjas. And how was it? It was the most god awful piece of retro shit that I ever had this! To... You're mm. still gonna end this going, I've just, like, seen something. Like, mm. someone's put an immense amount of genuine effort into creating a feeling here at the end. Mm. And it's, it's fantastic. It's beautiful. Good. As I understand it, John Borman, the director, is quite sort of like... I, I don't know, he's sort of like quite dismissive, quite sort of like self-deprecating about this film. Embarrassed, perhaps? Yeah, he, he kind of jokes about like, oh, we were doing a lot of drugs when we made this, you can fast forward through this scene if you want. And it's like, well, hold on, I think you're, I think you're being like too unkind to yourself, right? Because th this is a movie that like, okay, it's not Citizen Kane, right? Uh, it's maybe not even a great movie exactly, but... I think it's a good movie. I think most of all, it's an inventive movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is 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 trying to sort of like explore some themes interestingly, and I think it's trying to do that in a way that is like basically impossible in like a movie that got its distribution this wide uh, at the time now. And yeah, no, I'm I'm sort of like I'm very glad I saw it. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it a lot. Me too. Yeah, and they I, made I think, a work of art, and like, yeah, mm -hmm. truly, doing yeah, that is it doesn't always come out perfect, and sometimes mm -hmm. it comes out weird and unfocused, but a little bit you silly know, sometimes, but yeah, than just sure. Product, mm -hmm, absolutely. No, it's uh, like uh, it's it's a very sincere film, and I think a lot of the sort of criticism of it is tends to treat it as something that's trivial or something that's insincere, and it isn't. Mm -hmm. No, and also I think a, a lot of the criticism of it is by people who don't want to try and engage in city with a work of art. Yeah. It's like what well, the people are. Oh, I want to remember it so you don't have to. I'm too cool to be moved. I'm too cool to be <laughs> impressed or to like to try and approach it as if it's trying to tell me something or make me feel something because I'm so like cynical and clever and cool. And it's like, I think you actually cut yourself off by doing that. Like, mm. this is a work of art. Engage with it's it got, on that level. It's got level. really, really interesting yeah. things to say about, about violence, about masculinity, about uh, death. It is very like a play in that, mm -hmm. like, things can be other things and like a lot of the effects are done just with like actors committing to something in like a body and yeah sometimes you have to be like okay this is what they're trying to symbolize and you have to kind of like actively go with it it doesn't just spoon feed you and i i sort of i i joked a little bit about the the vortex being the afab house share earlier and i think there is space for an interesting and not so sarcastic exploration of like gender and gendering in this movie yeah because you know <laughs> Zed is kind of like exaggeratedly masculine. I mean, great casting for to get Sean Connery. Yeah, for. truly. Mm -hmm. You know, and and the ways in which the vortex is kind of like feminized or degendered, and the sort of difference between those two things. I think it's one of those things where it it's trying very hard to explore some ideas in like an experimental, progressive way, right? And I think that. Aging and and sexual assault are the two things where they kind of like it snaps back to the seventies a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the kind of feminism which this this film is kind of like steeped in or like aware of 
is is very much of the seventies too. Mm -hmm. I think it has an attempt to explore gender dynamics that is ultimately it, it transcends successfully, but is still like originating from second wave feminism of the seventies yeah. and this idea mm -hmm. that like uh, men are inherently uh, like intrinsically more violent yes. and, and so on. I hate all women. I would be really, really interested to see a, a modern remake of this. Mm. I was Done very... seriously. I would yeah. really, yeah, really genuinely. like to see it. By that. a woman. Mm. Yes, definitely. By a trans woman. By us. By yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, we've, in the course of doing this movie, we've gone from like encouraging them to watch Zardos with their friends to trying to organize watching Zardos with them to trying to organize remaking Zardos, which is kind like, of the, what, it, it, the best testament of the effect this film has on you. Yeah. Mm. Especially talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's John Thurman, come on the show and let us make Zardos. <laughs> Zardos yeah. 2, Zardos. I just want to say, John, John Thurman, first of all, great work. Phenomenal stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Set decoration by John Hosley. Unbelievable job. Ooh, Costume design yeah. by Crystal Cruz Borman, who I believe was Josh's. No, not Josh. Josh Borman is our friend. <laughs> <It was laughs> the previous episode. John Borman, yeah. who made the movie. His dad. It was his wife. Yeah. yeah no. It's... They did this for like for no money. <laughs> no money. Like his, like major parts of this are just like him and his wife just mm. doing things. Mm. Mm. And you don't you don't really get. Guys to like mm. make movies based on like I don't know fucking smoking a bunch of weed and yeah. reading, reading and Hegel. half remembering Hegel and T. S. Eliot. Can you, you know? imagine Daniel Craig doing Zardos now? I I badly want to see it. I would love to see that actually. I think and I, I can. Yeah, he'd be good at it. Mm. But I mean, like, can you imagine him doing a movie with like less than a million dollar budget? That's just like you know, it's just weird and like, just in a field in his pants. Like, yeah, yeah, it'd be fucking sick. It's just it's interesting the way the industry was different. Mm. This movie made me like Sean Connery more. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's it's like um when we watched Copland. I, I know you weren't there, Abby, but when I was mm. watched Copland, we yeah, were like, yeah, yeah. oh, this guy can act. Yeah, I, I watched the film. Yeah. I couldn't join the recording in the end, mm, but I mm. did really like it. Yeah, like it's it, one of those things you're like, oh, you can act, motherfucker. So I like feel a little bit like mm. not more sympathetic. I'm like more upset that there isn't. Genuinely, genuinely, this this makes me like rate the bonds worse. That like ne that this is the stuff that they were squandering, right? Yeah. Do you remember when we did shoot him up, and we yes. were like, okay, yeah. that was a bad film, and it was morally bad, but like yes. we respect the director. This is like the morally good version of that. It was like, okay, this is a weird film, mm -hmm. but like I respect the hell out of everyone who made it. Yeah, genuinely. I uh, th the thing is, it, it it's kind of. The context in which this film was made doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, these That's these hippies are kind of gone, you mm -hmm. know. And as a as a time capsule, uh, as a work of art from seventies kind of hippie or hippie adjacent art people, this is really really interesting to to interrogate, and it makes me want to sort of like, yeah, let let us do the remake. Yeah, let's do the remake. All right. <laughs> Well, the, this is this Great is Zardos. Pick, I mean, Great yeah, pick. fantastic. I mm. I knew we would do this eventually, but I had no preconceptions about it, and I'm so so glad that we we did it. I I, I picked this because the Hogs voted it um, on the they they wanted it so badly, and it ended up going up against Cars Two in the mm. in the rematch, and it it went out very very early, and I decided out of respect to put it on there. I did not even think it was going to be this good. I thought it'd be like. You know, nostalgia critic, haha. Yeah. Oh my god, doesn't this remind you of Jesus? I'm like, Jesus! I'm Jesus! Feel sorry for me, I'm Jesus! That's yeah, it. yeah. But it, uh, this rocks. Like, yeah. I had such a genuinely good time watching this movie. Yeah, and um, you can kind of have it both ways, because I also have the button that is just the nostalgia critic drops. Kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna try and limit my use of that, but you know it's gonna be difficult going, going forward. No, I want you to not. I yeah yeah. Wait, do you want me to limit it or do you want me to not I wish limit it? We had it? access because... to that when we did the Sean Connery bombs. <laughs> yeah. A sub review of Goldfinger is just kill yourself. Yeah yeah. I mean, don't even ask me about the one I got from that clip of um fucking Steve Harvey from Family Feud. Killing myself. <laughs> Just, just a little like <laughs> drop roundup. Uh, so, right. so, so, so look out. For those. <laughs>
Guilty Spawn 2024.